All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I wanted to take a little bit of time today to kind of get everybody up to speed and kind of a little bit of a refresher for myself on where we're at with HR 2339. HR 2339, as it stands for the vapor industry, would be a decimating piece of legislation. This is a full on flavor ban on anything that isn't a tobacco flavor, as well as a complete complete and total online sales ban prohibition. HR 2339 is also known as the Reversing the Youth Tobacco Epidemic Act of 2019. And the bill is still named that despite in 2020, we have the lowest youth smoking rates in the history of America, but I digress. This bill was introduced by Frank Pallone Jr., Democrat Senator from the great state of New Jersey, where they've also, in that state, kind of done this exact same thing. They eventually did vote to vote to vote on it the next day. So on Friday, February 28th, it was finally voted on. HR 2339 was finally voted on and no big surprises, it passed. And no bigger surprises, the majority of the yays for this particular bill now they were from the Dems. I've made my political stance fairly well known. I'm a freedom guy, I'm a registered libertarian, I lean to the conservative side of things, and vaping and tobacco harm reduction and tobacco control has become just a really politically divisive topic. No one on the Democratic side of these candidates this year have said anything positive about vaping, e even remotely. With the exception of Tom Steyer, which, He's not gonna get the nomination, but at least he said something nice about vaping. So the Reversing the Youth Tobacco Epidemic Act of 2019 was voted on, it passed through the House, the next stop is the Senate before it goes to the President. So even though it passed out of the House, there's still a few things standing in the way of this bill becoming a law, and one of those things is the Senate. Lots of people are speculating that our good buddy Moscow Mitch isn't even going to let this get to the floor for a vote, but if this this bill somehow does get to the Senate floor for a vote, I believe it's going to need a supermajority to pass to become a law. It can still pass and go to the president's desk to be signed into law, but if that's the path that this bill takes, it's going to run into some resistance there too. On Thursday, the 27th, the day that this was supposed to get voted on, the White House released an official statement of policy. This is coming directly from the office of the president, and I read through this this really only for the second time in the vlog last week and I'd like to kind of read through it again and absorb it a little bit more, explain it a little bit more. This administration opposes HR 2339. The administration is encouraged by legislative efforts to protect American youth from the harms of addiction and unsafe tobacco products. It also acknowledges that HR 2339 exempts premium cigars, which have comparatively lower use youth rates from certain regulatory burdens. Unfortunately, however, this bill contains provisions that are unsupported by the available evidence regarding harm reduction and American tobacco use habits. What? I always held out hope, but I kind of never thought I would see the words harm reduction in an official government document, much less a document from this administration who only a few months ago was ready to just ban all of vaping. Remember the big White House meeting? Remember Donald Trump sitting in the Oval Office saying kids are dying? The administration cannot support HR 2339's counterproductive efforts to restrict access to products that may provide a less harmful alternative to millions of adults who smoke combustible tobacco tobacco cigarettes. I almost feel like I'm just living on a different planet right now reading through this. Harm reduction? I mean, America's smoking tobacco habits? These are some nuances to this discussion that we have not heard yet, that have not been discussed yet. This includes the bill's prohibition of menthol e-liquids, which available evidence indicates are used very rarely by the youth. That line actually had me scratching my head a little bit until I realized that it's absolutely correct. The youth are not using menthol 
e-liquids. Youths aren't purchasing large bottles of three and six milligram menthol e-liquid as you would find in an adult vape shop. Youths are experimenting with 50 milligram closed system jewel pods. HR 2339 is attempting to ban something that the youths aren't even using. It also includes the bill's approach to remote retail sales. At this time, problems surrounding such sales should be addressed through the application of age verification technologies rather than, as this bill would do, prohibit such sales entirely. That is a completely reasonable, level-headed way to look at online sales. We have the technology to remotely age verify anyone. There are thousands of products that adults use that youth are not allowed to use or are illegal for them, but we don't ban them if youths are curious about them. This HR 2339 is really a huge, unprecedented move. This statement kind of talks about the marketing and advertising restrictions feeling a little too vague, which I absolutely agree with. The language in the bill says any of the marketing or advertising can't appeal to anyone under 21 years of age. I agree with the office of the president. That is just far too vague. It would just be like, yep, lots of things appeal to lots of different people and there's really no way to nail down what appeals to who and who appeals to what. Does this appeal to someone under 21? Because it's blue? Does this appeal to someone over 21? Because it's blue. Do maybe people under 21 and over 21 both like the color blue? The administration is committed to protecting the nation's youth from the harms of tobacco and has already taken several steps to do so. This includes signing legislation to raise the minimum age of sale for tobacco products to 21. That was done very, very recently and now we have Nationwide Tobacco 21, which no matter how you feel about it, it's there, it's a thing. I personally think that's yeah, a good thing. And I'm really only saying that in the context of youth vaping. I think it's silly to make someone who's 20 years old smoke another year before they have access to less harmful vapor products. But I also do believe that 18 year olds being able to buy vapor products and jewel pods who go to school with much younger kids, I think this is gonna cut off that supply chain and Sorry, not sorry, I know I'm a libertarian, but I think Tobacco 21 is a good move. And with that said, I also think we kind of just need to draw a line in the sand. Are we gonna say, okay, we've decided, and, and 21 is the adult age now. It's not 18, Eight, forget 18. Forget everything you know about 18. Now, it's 21, but it's not gonna be like that. Right now, it's only 21 for alcohol and tobacco and 18 still for everything else until someone decides that, well, we need to raise the age on uh, driver's licenses now because all these youths are getting into car accidents. Even though an average of nine teenagers aged 16 to 19 are killed every day in motor vehicle accidents. Maybe it does need to be driving license 21. See, it's a slippery slope. In January 2020, moreover, the administration issued guidance to prioritize enforcement against the unauthorized marketing of certain ENDS products to youth. And the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, is conducting regular surveillance of, and when appropriate, taking enforcement measures against websites, social media, and other publications that advertise regulated tobacco products. I honestly believe this is one of the reasons why so many vape YouTubers suddenly got strikes against their channel. If you had a link in your description to anywhere where someone could purchase a controlled tobacco product, you got a strike or something equivalent. I just had five of my videos just pulled down completely and I got a strike on top of it. I don't think that the federal government or the FDA has the time or manpower to police all of social media. I think that's kind of a crazy undertaking to even try to do, especially considering that the majority of them don't even know how to use social media. They're trying to tell senators that people are buying illicit contaminated THC carts on Snapchat. It was just, you know, in one ear and out the other. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little too ranty and it was meant to be more just informational, okay? Back on track. 
Business time. Business hours are over, baby. Eye on the prize. The bill takes the wrong approach to tobacco regulation. Rather than continuing to focus on the FDA's Center for Tobacco Products, Congress should implement President Trump's budget proposal to create a new, more directly accountable agency within the Department of Health and Human Services to focus on tobacco regulation. Something I say on Twitter very frequently is more government means less freedom always. And I realize I'm being a little bit of a bad libertarian right now by saying I really like this idea of another government organization that is completely dedicated to tobacco, tobacco control and tobacco regulation other than the FDA. Maybe let the FDA go back to, you know, Food and drugs. This new agency would be led by a Senate confirmed director and would have greater capacity to respond to the growing complexity of tobacco products and respond effectively to tobacco related public health concerns. And this last line of this document is where HR 2339 is going to run into resistance. Even if it gets to the Senate and even if it passes the Senate and has to go to the office of the president and be signed by Donald Trump, if presented to the president in its current form, the president's senior advisors would recommend that he veto the bill. I'll have a link for this down in the description if you want to read the whole document for yourself, but it is an eye-opening and refreshing piece of government propaganda. No, I know that propaganda is not the right word to use there. Smoking and vaping and nicotine have evolved. We're in the 21st century now. We're digital, baby. We're trying to use 1980s style thinking and problem solving to solve a very, very modern and complex issue. So that's kind of... Pfft, that's kind of where we're at. One thing that I'll be putting in the description of this video is a link so you can see exactly how everybody voted on HR 2339. And if the person from your state voted yay in favor of HR 2339, I would contact them immediately by any means you can. Email, Twitter is great for that. Truly and honestly, we do have elections coming up. I always said I would never tell you who to vote for, and I'm still not going to do that. But I will say, if Donald Trump sticks to his word from this document, he will win the vape vote. The vape vote matters. We haven't been chanting, we vape, we vote for the last six months for no reason. We've come this far and we're not slowing down anytime soon. So thank you so much, guys. Don't forget I'll have those important links down in the description. And remember, no matter what any crooked politician tells you, absolutely, absolutely keep on vaping. Where's my vape?